Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, astronaut Peggy Whitson returns to the space station to set some records. Aerial Border Patrol program is canceled. Will drones blacken the sky after Black Friday? I'm Brie Cross, it's November 23rd, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. When Peggy Whitson arrived at ISS this weekend, she became the oldest woman to fly in space at the age of 56. According to a report from NPR, Whitson will turn 57 during her stay on the space station, which is her third visit to the orbiting outpost. She will assume duties as the station's commander when the current crew returns to Earth, and when she returns to Earth next spring, she will hold the record as a U.S. astronaut having spent the most time in orbit. Her first flight to the space station was with Expedition 5 in 2002, and her second flight was with Expedition 16 in 2008. Whitson, who holds a doctorate degree in biochemistry, has also performed six spacewalks, amounting to a total time on the outside of the space station of 39 hours and 46 minutes. We at ANN congratulate astronaut Whitson on her spectacular career with NASA. A program to provide aerial surveillance along the Mexican border has been quietly ended by the Department of Homeland Security. According to the U.S. Army, Operation Phalanx was established in July 2010 based on a presidential executive order authorizing up to 1,200 soldiers and airmen along the 1,933-mile southwest border in support of the Customs and Border Protection Agency. The website Watchdog.org reports that Texas Congressman Henry Culler says he will challenge the move by Homeland Security to end the program. According to the report, Culler said Congress authorized full funding for the operation for 2017. DHS said it ended the program because illegal crossings of the border have declined between Texas and Mexico, but according to Watchdog.org, data from the U.S. Border Patrol contradicts that assertion by saying that apprehensions in the Rio Grande Valley are up 27 percent this year compared to 2015. The operation is credited with seizing nearly 13,000 pounds of narcotics between March 2012 and December 2015. After the break, if a drone is on your Christmas list, understand the rules. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Explore No Limits Flying in the FAA Certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best-selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. With Black Friday just around the corner, it's a pretty sure bet that someone's going to be running special deals on small drones. Here's a few things to think about if you end up with one of these really fun gadgets. The FAA has recently issued regulations and registration requirements for any remotely controlled aircraft that weighs more than about one half pound and less than 55 pounds. The FAA is referring to any kind of remote controlled aircraft falling into this classification as a small unmanned aerial system. They call this an SUAS. First and foremost, the SUAS must be registered with the FAA. The registration can be performed online and the FAA has a special website set up to accomplish this. If your SUAS is strictly for hobby and recreation, it's important that you look up the FAA regulation titled FAR 101 Subpart C. If you follow these rules, it's pretty easy to keep out of trouble. However, if you use your SUAS for anything other than recreational and hobby purposes, you'll fall under the regulations titled FAR 107. This rule is complex and will be enforced. Lastly, check for any possible local municipality or state regulations regarding UAS operation. We at ANN say have fun, but also be legal and safe. With some 3,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. 
beautiful aircraft, very, very sleek, but fundamental in the disruptive technology that's being applied here is it's all electric. Electric propulsion allows the airplane to be aerodynamically much, much more efficient, lightweight composite structure, of course, but the key with electric propulsion is that we're getting our costs down to about one dollar per flight hour of energy used. It wasn't long ago when electric-powered man-carrying flight was an experimental novelty. Now it's moving into the real world of flight training. Search Aero Electric Aircraft rolls out the Sunflyer on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, AmeriFlight signs Career Path Pilot Program Agreement. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B Models. The B Models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. AmeriFlight and Omni Air International have entered into a career program to facilitate pilot career needs. The mutually beneficial relationship is designed to offer a defined path under which pilots can advance to a Part 121 certified air carrier. A recent commercial unmanned aerial system market report indicates global demand for unmanned aerial systems will increase. They cite increased uses by police departments, border patrol, oil and gas industries, and other such public services. They also indicate concerns over a lack of UAS pilots. NASA successfully launched the first in a series of advanced geostationary weather satellites for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration last week. The satellite will boost the nation's weather observation capabilities, leading to more accurate and timely forecast, watches, and warnings. Cessna has selected partners for their 2017 Top Hawk program. They are Eastern Kentucky University, Ohio State University, Auburn University, Southern Illinois University Carbondale, and Louisiana Tech University. Each university will take delivery of a new custom-branded Cessna Skyhawk in early 2017. The State Department has approved a possible foreign military sale to the government of Kuwait for F-A-18 Super Hornet aircraft with support, equipment, and training. The estimated value of the deal is $10.1 billion. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Leonardo from Mechanica has announced the first flight of an Augusta Westland AW101 Merlin Mark IV helicopter from their facility in southwest England late last month. Leonardo is upgrading 25 Royal Navy Merlin Mark III and 3A aircraft to the Mark IV standard as part of the Merlin Life Sustainment Program contract. The contract is valued at approximately $412 million. Delivery of the aircraft will start in 2017 and continue through 2020 with the work being performed at Leonardo's Yeovil facility. The aircraft are fully optimized for ship operations and includes automatic main rotor blade folding and tail fold. It said the upgrade helicopters will deliver enhanced capability for the Royal Navy's Commando Helicopter Force. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great Thanksgiving and we will see you Monday.